That's quite a journey, uh, unexpected journey. But I think that your experience, you know, on the one hand, really experiencing the Soviet Union and that culture, but also that really practical engineering um, approach to how to ask these questions and how to research them. Because one of the things that you found was that uh, there wasn't a lot of research on pathological altruism. But I think that having those experiences early on kind of woke you up from this illusion that we're in, where in Western culture, you know, one of the beautiful things of Western culture is that we value empathy. We value altruism. We have, you know, integrated this very Christian narrative of valorizing the victim, which, which has led to a lot of good, right? That integration, that is one of the beautiful things of Western culture. What that's created is a blind spot. We don't see, uh, we, we're even afraid of criticizing uh, empathy um, or, you know, thinking where, where has empathy gone so far that even if we started out with good intentions, our consequences um, aren't uh, as we would like them to be. So I think that being able to see another culture um, sometimes can give us that perspective that we need. So in terms of pathological altruism, you lay out a few examples in your book and you start with this kind of battered wife syndrome, as you call it, or codependency. And I think that archetype of a woman who, on the one hand, you know, she puts everybody's needs uh, before her own. You know, she's super compassionate. She's super caring. Um, and she always seems to find herself in these situations where she's being abused. And how, on the one hand, you have all of this empathy and all of this, you know, caring for others, which we think is, you know, purely good. But then you realize that on the other end of that, she's sucking everybody into her vortex of chaos. You know, and you really give uh, a very interesting story of how that dynamic occurs. So what is battered wife syndrome in terms of, you know, the terminology uh, and what have you found in terms of the inner workings, the inner psychological workings in these dynamics? Well, first, I think it's helpful for us to back up a step and say um, and realize that, like, when I first began working on pathological altruism, I thought, you know, I believe most cultures have pretty much the same definitions of of altruism, what what doing good for others should be, and uh, um, and that's really not true. <laughs> I was so shocked at that. And so we have what we think is a, a proper definition of altruism here in the West, being empathetic and so forth. But every single culture believes that their definition of altruism is really the best and the only technical one. Um, and a lot of this devolves, I, I think, on what your perceptions of, uh, of the other are. In other words, um, if, if the person um, that you're talking about that you're, you're attempting to be altruistic with is someone who is within your culture and within your, you know, bailiwick, um, then that's where altruism applies. And you, you kind of cut off feelings of, uh, of empathy when they're outside of your culture. Um, and that, uh, or outside of your worldview. So it, it's just, it's quite interesting how differently people uh, kind of look at altruism and helping others, you know. Uh, so um, given that as a basis, 